Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Marianne Montulioni, Vice President of Professional Development for the Long Island Board of Realtors. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Um, she's been with us before, our friend Gwen O'Shea with uh, CDCLI. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Gwen before I turn it over to her. Gwen O'Shea is the President and CEO of the Community Development Corporation of Long Island. She oversees the 54 year old regional nonprofit with three nonprofit affiliates and numerous for profit subsidiaries, over three, $31 million in assets, an annual budget of $35 million, and a 110 plus member team. CDLI strives to strengthen homes, communities, and individuals. CDLI serves over 25,000 individuals annually through a variety of business lines, rental assistance, residence assistance, the homeowner center, home improvement and optimization, and housing development and planning. CDLI's Community Development Finance Institution, CDFI, provides critical capital to underfinanced communities supporting multifamily developments, homeowners, and individuals. Currently, over $12 million is deployed in loan funds. CDLI is a co venture partner in 14 multifamily rental complexes representing over 1,736 homes with an additional 228 in construction. CDLI has developed 235 single family affordable for sale subdivisions and currently manages 47 single and multifamily scattered site rental properties. As a chartered member of Neighbor, Neighbor Works, a congressionally chartered nonprofit organization that supports community development, CDLI is recognized as an exemplary organization, meeting a high standard of fiscal integrity and service performance to assist residents in achieving their dreams. Gwen serves as chair of the Federal Home Loan Bank of New York's Housing Advisory Council, is an executive member of the New York State Neighbor Works Alliance, and is a board member of the Long Island Federally Qualified Health Centers. Gwen received her MS from Milano School of International Affairs, Management and Urban Policy, in nonprofit management and public policy and her BA from University of Massachusetts at Amherst in cultural anthropology and Italian history. Certainly worth telling you all about our friend Gwen and I turn it over to her, welcome. Thank you so much, Marianne. And thank you Doreen for um, inviting me today. It's a pleasure to be with you all. I want to apologize in advance, I am recovering, like I'm sure many of you who on the call may be from uh, a winter illness. So um, please bear with me if I pause for a minute to um, take a drink of water or I use a tissue. So um, great to be here. Um, so proud to be able to share uh, the amazing work that CDLI does and ideally connect with many of you and further our relationships and the impact that we can have collectively on creating home for Long Islanders. So as Marianne noted, I'm Gwen O'Shea. I'm the president and CEO of uh, CDLI. We've recently rebranded, so formerly known as the other CDC. We figured it was time post-COVID to stop being confused with the Center on Disease Control, and so we are now Community Development Long Island. I'm still very much committed to um, the work that we do here in the community. I'm going to share my screen here <clears throat> to walk you through, and hopefully <clears throat> I'll get a shout out if you can't see the slide deck right now, um, but I'm going to just get the slideshow. Bear with me here. Sorry, my Zoom button, here we go, is covering up my from the beginning. So um, again, Community Development Long Island, all about home, health, and opportunity. Really excited to be here with you um, today to talk um, at a high level, a little snippets, obviously not getting too much into the weeds because uh, we do have a limited period of time together 
but happy to connect with any or all of you after the presentation to give you more details or further information on any of the areas that I'm highlighting today. So today, the presentation that I'll be sharing with you all is all things home, ranging um, from information related to the Housing Choice Voucher Program, landlord incentives that are available in that program, down payment assistance opportunities for first-time home buyers, other lending opportunities for individuals who are interested in purchasing or acquiring a home, as well as a new opportunity that we're really excited to share that pertains to homeowners interested in creating or establishing an accessory dwelling unit on their property. So you heard a little bit about um, CDLI. We've been serving the Long Island community for 54 years, um, covering areas from all the way to the East End, all the way into Brooklyn and Queens. So we do cover all of the counties that do make up Long Island. Um, we are a, the only Long Island member of NeighborWorks America, an exemplary rated organization. We are held to extremely high standards related to our finances, our governance, and our program um, service delivery um, measured against our peers, only 17 other organizations in New York State, collectively 250 organizations make up the NeighborWorks Network, network um, a group of entities that are committed to innovation, professionalism, and doing the best that we can and the most that we can to ensure home for all individuals in the areas that we serve. A little bit more information about our, our mission and vision. As Mary Ann mentioned, we have a number of business lines that we use to accomplish and reach and strive towards our mission. Uh, they range from the rental assistance program. We oversee close to 10,000 housing choice vouchers throughout Nassau, Suffolk, uh, and Brooklyn counties. Uh, we also have a robust resident services program working on site at many properties to provide services and supports to residents at that property uh, and ensure the financial stability of the individual and the development itself. We have a robust home improvement and optimization program covering everything from weatherization, energy efficiency, um, electric uh, retrofits for single family and multifamily properties. Um, that work covers all of Long Island and we have expanded some of our work under the resiliency retrofits, which is focused on um, home improvements related to climate and um, resiliency efforts. And so that work is uh, primarily conducted in Suffolk, but we also are doing quite a bit of outreach in Brooklyn and Queens and work there based on just the need um, to preserve and create uh, resilient homes for individuals in those communities. We also, which we'll talk more about today, have a robust home ownership center, everything from pre to post home ownership counseling support, uh, financial uh, uh, benefits through that program as well. We have a community development financial institution, which is known as a CDFI. We are able to lend and fill gaps within lending spaces that our traditional mainstream partners um, are unable to fill. Um, we have a very robust housing development and planning area, which is really under which all of our real estate, our assets and our opportunities sit for development, for financing, uh, for managing um, and creating uh, homes, both from a multifamily and a single family perspective. Today, I'd like to drill down on some areas in particular that I think might be most applicable to the work that those of you on the call are doing on a daily basis. Um, and that relates to the Housing Choice Voucher Program. I'm getting a little bit of a better understanding of that program, some of the incentives that are not now available in particular to landlords who are interested in learning more about that program. This pertains to landlords that have multifamily units as well as single family properties uh, throughout our counties. There are some new incentives, both for the traditional Housing Choice Voucher Program, but also for a new program called Making Moves, which is really focused on providing rental opportunities and home opportunities in what are referred to as higher opportunity areas that we'll talk a little bit more about. I also wanna make sure you are versed on um, and aware of our Home Ownership Center and all the different resources and supports that are available um, to your landlords, to you and to potential clients um, through our Home Ownership Center. Give you a little bit more information about some of the products that are available through our Community Development Financial Institution and talk a little bit more about the Accessory Dwelling Unit Program that is really exciting and a great value add for individuals that are homeowners or looking to become homeowners in communities that do allow for the creation of accessory dwelling units. And then take some questions that you might have as it pertains to these items. So 
Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, very often, there is some confusion about um, the program requirements, the program benefits. Um, oftentimes, individuals may confuse who runs the program, who's participating in the program. So I want to share a little bit of information uh, with you today, in particular for those of you that might be representing landlords that are looking to rent their properties. So the Housing Choice Voucher Program, formerly known as the Section 8 Program, um, is a great way to provide housing opportunities to individuals on Long Island that are financially constrained. Um, as you know, Long Island um, faces many challenges in the housing market, one of which is a lack of actual um, regulated available rental properties. Out of all of our housing stock, we have about 21% of units, whether they be single family or multifamily, that are available from a rental perspective. This pales in comparison to our neighboring um, sister counties, whether that be Westchester or Northern New Jersey, those areas have rental properties when you look at their overall housing stock, somewhere in the neighborhood between you know, 30 to 40%, which creates greater housing opportunities for individuals, obviously, and, and reduces some of the cost challenges that many individuals face here when trying to secure safe and affordable rental housing. So some of the benefits for participating in this program, recognizing that the competition um, you know, is great as we look at rental properties. Participating in the Housing Choice Voucher Program from a landlord perspective really provides greater tenancy. Um, what we know, what research points to is individuals participating in this program tend to make um, a home a home for a long time. They want that ongoing permanency. They want to be part of the community. They want to be connected to the school district if there are children in that household. And so what we see on average is a tenancy around seven to eight years. This brings great benefits to landlords who, if you see turnover year after year, that brings obviously additional cost. Unfortunately, if that requires an eviction proceeding or if that requires any rehab to the property, even if it's a very amicable um, transition with the tenant, there still are additional costs in terms of making those necessary upgrades for a new individual that might be moving in. Additionally, as we look at the Housing Choice Voucher Program, it's important to note that these are guaranteed monthly payments. An individual pays up to 30% of their income towards their rental payment, and the rest of the rental payment is paid through the program. And so that payment comes to the landlord at the start of every month. One of the things we saw in COVID with so many of the challenges that we all faced uh, during that pandemic was the challenge in landlords in receiving rental payments. I'm sure you probably had many um, clients or individuals that you were working with that were challenged with getting the rental payment from their tenant at that point in time. Through this program, we were able to ensure that all uh, landlords who were participating had ongoing rental payments throughout the pandemic. There was not a missed monthly payment for any landlord that was participating in this program. Additionally, because of the program requirements, there are inspections that are done annually to make sure that the tenant and the landlord are adhering to appropriate health and safety uh, requirements. These very often match that of the municipality in which the rental property resides. There are also rental adjustments, an ability to ask for an annual rent increase, and those rent increases are for the most part guaranteed uh, year after year. So landlords do see that additional payment, which allows them to make, make sure that the property is up to the standard, not just the program, but of course the municipality require the municipal requirements based on where that property is. The program also, which we'll talk a little bit about, does provide higher rental payments in higher opportunity areas. What are higher opportunity areas? These are communities throughout Long Island where there are a variety of factors that differ from their neighboring communities. These factors include things like the area median income would be higher than some of the other surrounding areas. When we take a look at the school data that's released by New York State, that school district is at or above exceeding some of the sort of uh, middle thresholds in terms of outcomes for students participating within that district. Crime is lower within these areas. Um, there is access to public transportation, and jobs within that area have an overall higher income or earning available to individuals. Additionally, it's important to note that the program has now recognizing the challenges, in particular in Long Island's market. Excuse me, a little sip of water. Thank you. 
As you may have seen, the New York State Comptroller recently released a report that spoke to um, the challenges housing burden that individuals are facing. And what the most recent report showed is Long Island's housing burden, those who are in the housing space, whether you're a homeowner or you're a renter, are feeling it more so than any other place across New York State. That means the burden here is greater than all of the five boroughs, which we know oftentimes people make comments about it's more expensive to live within the five boroughs. It is now more cost burdensome to live on Long Island. 50, over 54% of Long Islanders are cost burdened when they look at their housing costs. And so as a way to help incentivize landlords to support individuals who are financially constrained finding these properties, the state has made two new opportunities available. There's a landlord incentive payment. So when a landlord agrees to participate in the program and sign that housing assistance contract uh, with their tenant, they do receive a one month incentive payment for um, providing a HCV participant with a housing opportunity. As well, there is a security deposit that is provided to the landlord and those payments are made rather quickly. So we know that the market is extremely competitive and it's important to note that these payments are made to the landlord um, through us in a very um, expeditious nature to ensure that we can hold on to that unit for the HCV participant. Also important to note, lots of times there's confusion around, well, you don't get paid a lot if you're participating in the program. I think it's also important to note when we talk about participating in the program that New York State um, does have a source of income discrimination law. So while an individual may be utilizing the program to secure housing, a landlord cannot discriminate against that individual based on the source of income. And going back to the previous slides that I showed, you can also see why some of that information is erroneous because payments are made quite quickly and actually the program has a significant amount of benefits to it. Um, important to note that the payment standards are um, with, uh, within 110% of the FMRs, the fair market rents that are paid, which is a pretty competitive space. And there are what are called exception payment standards. Again, these higher payment standards that I mentioned, where in more higher opportunity areas where either rental properties are far and few between, between or rental costs are so much higher that there is an opportunity to make a higher payment for that rental property through this program. Just to bring to your attention uh, an additional program, I know we've talked with, with some of you about this when the program started back in 2021, but we do also uh, administer a program called Making Moves. And this is an opportunity for Housing Choice Voucher participants who are interested voluntarily choosing to move to a new area, um, a higher opportunity area, we are able to not only provide the security deposit and the incentive payment, but up to $5,000 to the landlord to participate in the program in these areas. And those funds can be made, used to make any improvements um, to the program or simply used as an incentive to, again, ensure and expand the number of rental units that are available in areas that have historically not had rental units available to individuals. So transitioning, and maybe I'm going to pause there for a minute because I'm going to transition into first-time home ownership. I see there are questions in the chat. I'm going to lean on Ethan, if you don't mind, um, to just pause before I talk more about our home ownership center, take any questions that there may be related to the Housing Choice Voucher program or to the Making Moves program or to CDLI overall. Let's see. I'm going to pull up. Okay, in the chat, I don't see any questions. So Ethan, I'm gonna lean on you. Anything that you have that pertains to the first section here that I could answer for participants? No, it looks like uh, it looks like we haven't gotten any questions yet. Uh, oh, actually, I think we might see Robin if you wanna put yours in the chat here. Uh, we may have a question real quick. Um, uh, Alexandra asked if you can explain the one month incentive more. Sure. So um, the one month incentive is strictly that. It's an incentive. We know that there are a lack of rental units on Long Island um, that because of that, that oftentimes uh, forces many individuals to even be able to compete in that space from a cost perspective. 
So as a way to incentivize more landlords to participate in the program, which requires a one year lease um, with a potential tenant, there are a, there is a one month incentive payment available and a one month security deposit available um, for those individual for those landlords that are interested in participating in the program. Um, do you contact for clients to call for this program or do you provide with? So what we do, um, Gabrielle, to answer to your question is we usually take information from landlords that have available units and then share that with individuals who are looking for units. Um, and that way they can go out, they can meet with the landlord, they can look at the property. And then if there's an agreement that that individual is interested in the property and the landlord is interested in signing a lease, at that point in time, we would move forward with the incentive payment and the security deposit um, payment as well assuming that the property meets the inspection standards, the health and safety standards, which again, are very much in line with municipal requirements um, as it pertains to rental permits. Um, and so then I see, would a month of security deposit, yes. So it's, it's really two incentives to participate in the program right now. One incentive is a one month incentive and the other incentive is the security deposit. So essentially landlords that are participating in the program could receive two months of rent, one of which is held as a security deposit, one of which is held as uh, an incentive for participating in the program. And then ongoing monthly payments would be made on behalf of the tenant. Um, when is the security paid to the landlord for the tenant to move in? Um, you know, it depends. Usually we try to make that payment within 30 days. Obviously it depends on as soon as that lease is signed um, and getting that individual into the unit. Um, if someone is moving in the next day, um, we're not able to get that payment out the next day, but we do have a pretty quick turnaround time for those payments. Okay, so I'm going to transition to um, first time home buyer uh, education, which is a part of our home ownership center. So CDLI has a pretty robust home ownership center that really aims to serve and work with individuals at any phase or stage of considering home ownership. So some individuals may come to us, they may have a 700 credit score, they may have $15,000, um, $20,000, you know, in savings to put towards down payment assistance. They're looking for a property, need a little bit more down payment assistance costs. They come to our home ownership center. Um, someone may come to us. They may have a 500 credit score and not have any money for down payment. They can get there, right? We may then move them into a track that we refer to as our financial health and wellness coaching, getting individuals ready and prepared for home ownership. But no matter at what phase an individual comes to us, we're ready and prepared to make sure that an individual is empowered to be as successful as a home owner as they can be when that time comes. And so individuals come to us and um, we work with them on preparing for home ownership. We work with them on budget and credit counseling, looking at uh, mortgages that are available to them, looking at and providing information related to homes that are available, and then working with them very closely to understand the roles and responsibility of many of the key players that will be involved with them as they go down this journey or enter into this journey of home ownership. And so that includes realtors, home inspectors, attorneys, mortgage lenders. Um, we have ongoing courses that we offer both virtually and in person here at our office in Melville. We also are happy to tailor and bring programs on site to employers or other individuals that have a cohort of um, team members or individuals that are interested in learning more about the program. We welcome those of you who might be interested in participating in some of those courses to be in touch with us because we do a sort of a round robin and bring in many different individuals to connect with um, potential home buyers and learn more about um, the process by bringing their services into the classroom with our students. <laughs> As I mentioned, um, for many of the individuals that may be coming to us, they may not yet be ready for home ownership. There may be some credit issues they have to address, savings issues that they want to address, or they may not even be interested in home ownership. Quite frankly, they may be interested in just raising their credit score so they can save more, buy a car, go on a vacation, excuse me, or just reduce 
their interest payments overall. So we do offer individual and group sessions. It's a great way for individuals, whether those just starting out, coming out of you know graduating college or those later in life, uh, having sold a home, going through a divorce, really just a great foundation to regroup and center on what are the key aspects that are important to you individually from a financial health and wellness perspective. And again, through these courses, um, both individual and group, we welcome and have participation of many partners throughout the community. In addition to working with homeowners, so again, homeowners will come to us, they'll be getting prepared for homeownership, we'll work with them and share with them information that's available on current grants, whether that be matching DPA funds, excuse me, down payment assistance funds from um, the Federal Home Loan Bank of New York, or other funds that are available from mortgage lenders, municipalities, or resources that we have available. That information is shared with all individuals that come in through our doors. And while we are very um, much committed to creating home ownership and have a great success rate with individuals that come to our center at five years after, it's 98% of individuals maintain their home ownership. We do know that those that maybe hadn't worked with us when they acquired a property, or those that did that have come up to other challenges, may need, need some intervention supports throughout their the life of home ownership. And so in addition to getting people prepared and ready for home ownership and over the finish line, we also provide a lot of supports to individuals that may be dealing with foreclosure issues or maybe dealing with you know the forbearance issues related to COVID and how do they make their way out of that. We're here as a HUD certified trained home ownership center to work with individuals and provide objective information so that individuals make the best decision that makes sense for them. That includes providing reverse mortgage counseling. And with our population here on Long Island, our aging population, the 62 plus growing um, over the course of the past two decades and that growth looking to continue over the next two decades, the high cost of living here on Long Island, maintaining that home is challenging for individuals. But many individuals, as we can imagine, want to stay in home. They want to stay in the community that they know and that they very much has been just a fabric of their lives for decades. So we work with individuals on what are their options to maintain that home and look at budgeting and financing and see is it feasible for an individual to maintain the rest of their existence within that property. Additionally, um, for individuals that come through our home ownership center or maybe coming back to connect with us after having been through the home ownership center, we do provide um, a high number of products, lending products to individuals throughout the communities that we serve. So we are, <clears throat> excuse me, as Marianne mentioned, a community development financial institution, which means we are regulated by the Department of Financial Services at New York State and by the uh, Office of the uh, Comptroller and Currency at the federal level to make sure that the lending that we do meets the mission of our organization. And so our focus is really on providing financial resources and sources into communities and to individuals that have historically been underfinanced and under-resourced. And so we're able to take a little bit of a, of a different risk than uh, more of the traditional financial institutions can with the capital that we have. We're able to look at different considerations when looking at credit score or down payment assistance or ongoing employment opportunities to really help those that are right at the breaking point of getting over the finish line and the hurdle of home ownership and being able to do so. So through our CDFI, we provide down payment assistance, both grants and loans. Um, we also provide, provide acquisition and rehabilitation grants and loans. As we know, Long Island has a, as one of the oldest suburbs across uh, the country, our housing stock, the majority of our housing stock um, is pretty old. Right, and uh, it's had a lot of wear and tear there. And for many individuals that perhaps have been living in that property, aged in that property, um, improvements may be necessary for the next buyer that's coming in. And we see very often, again, for individuals that are in our purchase space, which is below the million dollar um, acquisition cost, the prices, the, the, the homes that are available very often are requiring additional rehab. And so we have a number of products there available for individuals to ensure that when they move into that property, it meets the health and safety standards that we all set for ourselves and will be a great place for people to start the next phase of their home ownership life. We also provide significant support for existing homeowners who are looking to 
need to do repairs to the property, replace their septic system. We know in Suffolk County, we have over 350,000 single families that are leaking uh, nitrogen in, into the water, um, causing serious uh, implications to the quality of our water. So we are here ready to assist individuals looking to replace those systems and leverage the state and county funds with our dollars to cover that cost, in particular for those that are financially constrained, put in that new system. Um, as I noted, we also have first-time home buyer uh, down payment assistance and grants and loans. And most recently, we have created um, new funding through the accessory dwelling unit um, program that we are running on behalf of New York State for homeowners who are interested in creating a legal permanent rental property within their existing single family or on the site a separate standalone if the code of the municipality allows for such construction. So a little bit about the um, ADU program, um, the accessory dwelling uh, program um, is available to homeowners who have a property that they would like to construct an accessory dwelling unit on. We're currently, and I should have updated the slide, I apologize because East Hampton is in the queue for the next community that we'll be working in, but we're currently working with homeowners in the town of Babylon, Shelter Island, Southampton, and soon to be East Hampton, who are looking to construct a uh, accessory dwelling unit on their property. It's important to note that all of the municipalities that I mentioned have existing accessory dwelling zoning code, zoning code allowances on the books. So constructing, either rehabbing the property, which is an opportunity um, you can either build a new accessory dwelling unit on the property or improve an accessory dwelling unit. If you had one that you do not yet have a permit for, there's no penalty for bringing that unit up to code. Um, or if you wanted to construct within your house structure, a accessory dwelling unit that's also allowable through this program. And part of the reason we're working with the municipalities that allow for this is because it doesn't then force the homeowner to request a variance or delay the construction from happening because the town already allows for such construction. So within this program, um, there's actually $125,000 available to homeowners who are interested. It is a forgivable grant after 10 years. The funds, the $125,000, cover the cost of the design, construction, and oversight. We do anticipate, as you can imagine, that many of these um, construction uh, efforts will exceed the $125,000, in particular, if there's a new septic system that needs to be put in, if it is a standalone um, unit that is being constructed. And so, hence, our loan product that is available at very low interest um, rates to allow for individuals to bring this construction to fruition. For individuals that are interested in participating in the accessory dwelling unit program, the income is capped there. Um, it does go up to 100% of the area median income. So you can see here on the slide, that represents about $102,000 a year for an household size of one. If you're a family size of four, $156,000 a year. Um, I do believe some of the municipalities are looking to create their own loan fund that then would allow homeowners who are over this income threshold to borrow at zero interest and create an accessory dwelling unit because the creation of units is really important to the municipalities in which we're working. Also important to note with this program, there are some requirements, right? Obviously one first and foremost is ensuring that the construction that the newly built accessory dwelling unit meets the code of the municipality and that it's a safe habitable place for individuals to reside. It does also require that individuals utilizing this new property and homeowners themselves are allowed to actually live in the accessory dwelling unit and rent out their home if that's an option. Again, we know with our aging home ownership um, population, many individuals may be in a property that consists of two, three, four, five bedrooms. They only need a one bedroom. They could be li living in this accessory dwelling unit and then renting the full house as a rental property that is allowable uh, by program guidelines. But what is required is that that tenant, whether in the accessory dwelling unit or in the home itself, is a permanent year round tenant. So this is not meant to create additional Airbnbs or VRBOs or long weekend rentals. This is meant to help address the housing crisis that we have here on Long Island, the workforce, workforce housing crisis that we have and expand the number of year long units that are available to individuals. 
Additionally, there's a 10 year compliance period. So we, CDLI, will be working with the homeowner to check in and make sure uh, for 10 years that the property continues to meet the health and safety standards of the municipality and that the individual residing in that property is in fact a year long resident. Once a homeowner meets that 10 year um, compliance period, the loan, the grant is forgiven. And so there is no amount of money um, that needs to be paid back. If a homeowner decides that let's say year five, they wanna sell the property, they have the opportunity to either transition the additional five years over to the new home purchaser. If the buyer is not interested in that, then the seller would pay back at a prorated rate the remaining five years on that $125,000. And so um, that's a wrap on uh, the information that I wanted to share with you all related to accessory dwelling units, our home ownership center, some of the lending products that we have, um, and our housing choice voucher program, along with the incentives that are now a part of that program and the Making Moves initiative. So I'm going to stop sharing right now and um, see if there are any questions. That we, we did can... have quite a few come in, um, but we do have time. So hopefully we can try and get to most of them if possible. Um, see. Um, all right, so let's see how, how we want to go through this. Um, I guess let's see. I don't them. see them. Um, actually, it, Ethan, if it's easier for me, I think, and then you tell me if I'm missing. I, keep, I see there's a, quest, a question about providing a first-time homebuyer education in Spanish. Yes, we do. That's a great question and a really important one. As we see throughout our communities, I think Long Island now has a 27% population. 27% of our population is Spanish-speaking, so really important and critical that we provide those services our organization provides services in um, English, Spanish, French Creole, and um, uh, Chinese it is available to individuals that may have uh, language needs other than English. And that is also provided through the course, course program um, that we offer. Um, can you, let's see, can the agents charge 10 to 12% of the rent roll be compensated with commission? Um, I'm assuming, and I don't know, Lori, if you want to chime in here, um, we are able to pay in the Making Moves program part of the commission for a realtor showing that property. I don't want to definitively say it's the 10 to 12 percent. I'd like to check in with the team, because as you can imagine, with a team of 110, they mo most of them know a heck of a lot more than me. So um, I just want to check in and, and see if there is a cap on that level. Um, but I know one of the things we are also considering, which is important to put on your radar, and we're waiting on approval from, from New York State, which should happen within the next month, is to provide an incentive to brokers who bring properties to us. So in addition to the current incentive payments, there would be a separate, I think we were looking at $750 per unit in addition to the other incentive payments and potentially um, the, the additional rent roll compensation. So that's another way to incentivize brokers to bring new units to the proper, to, to us um, for potential participant um, engagement. But I will get back to you on that. I also see you have a question about payment standards by zip codes. So uh, Long Island, as you all know, um, is made up of lots of different municipalities, right? For um, just under 3 million residents, we have a, about 1,300 zoning districts and um, 150 municipalities, right? We have two counties, we have two cities, we have probably about 10 or so towns and then lots of incorporated villages, unincorporated villages and hamlets. And so within that are census tracts that dictate the payments and the payment standards. And so that information is available on our interactive map on our website. Um, and I will follow up with that exact link on our website. Um, so you all can scroll through that and see um, what are higher opportunity areas that I reference and get a better handle on what properties may reside within those areas. Um, can you address the case managers of the tenants to respond to emails to send them with a regional turnaround? So our, um, our 
staff uh, have a requirement of responding to emails within 48 hours. As you can imagine, as we're all dealing with coming out of COVID, there's a lot more correspondence that's going on through email than any other form of communication. So we do give our team um, quite a bit of time to, not quite a bit, 48 hours to respond. But I do also want to make sure, and more to maybe just shoot me an email offline because it sounds like you're very engaged with the program, that you're connecting with the right individuals because we do have certain staff members because we know with the Making Moves program that there is a very quick turnaround time to get people leased up into properties to get payments out. We have um, individuals that are specifically working on that program, whereas we have many other team members that are working on the broader program overall. So let's connect on that and make sure um, that we have you connected with the right people. Um, oh, names of the municipalities. Sure. We are working in the towns of municipalities. I'm sorry, I should repeat the questions. Repeat the name of the municipalities that you're already working on with accessory dwelling units. We're working in the town of Babylon, the town of Shelter Island, the town of Southampton, and we have our fingers crossed that we'll be working shortly within the town of East Hampton as well. Um, are all landlords homeowners required to provide a rental permit and or certificate of occupancy? Is it specific to the town or is it across the board? Great question. So we lean on the municipality, right? Um, Long Island is home of local rule. So there are some municipalities that don't have rental permit requirements, right? There are some municipalities that have very stringent rental requirement um, that have to get renewed annually. And so it's based on what is the requirement of the municipality. Uh, usually, if you're talking about a multifamily, a certificate of occupancy very often qualifies as that rental permit. So again, it's all driven by what the municipality requires. And that is, in fact, then what we need. And I All right. think yeah, that I think covers we... everything that I see. I saw some people had asked questions in the chat. Um, if if oh. your questions didn't, yeah, we got a lot in there, but I, you may have covered oh. some of those. Okay, during great. The I'm so sorry that I, I was do I was in chat area, not Q and A. So now, or or vice versa. But now back to the other. Okay, so questions about offer DPA and repair grants. Okay, great question. So. And any and all of you on the call, and I will put in my chat here just to make sure you have it. I want you to have my email. So you can, let me just make sure that's right. Yep. Geoshea at CDCLI. So you can follow up with me with any, you know, more in the weeds questions that you have. And I will probably most likely, as I mentioned, direct you to um, my much smarter team members here um, that can give you in the weed details about deadlines and cutoffs, but most of our programs are on a rolling basis. So um, looking at um, down payment assistance, for example. So from a loan perspective, our down payment assistance goes up to $75,000 uh, for individuals. Right now, the rates range between four and 6% for that down payment assistance, and that's based on the income of the household. Um, our down payment assistance grants go up to uh, $40,000. That will change shortly when we get our new contract because the state is now allowing that to go up to $75,000 because they recognize the high cost of not just home construction, but acquisition here on Long Island, which is a wonderful addition um, to, to our area to be able to have some of those additional resources. Um, Repair grants also vary um, a sum, depending on which bucket you fall in, whether it's grant or loan, go up to $50,000. Our accessory dwelling unit repair grants will go up to $125,000. Um, so I'm happy to go further into the weeds uh, with you all and have uh, Raphael, who runs our lending, share some of that information um, with you. And again, it's, it's really all rolling. So we as an entity work on a, a calendar fiscal year, but are always staying on top of, you know, um, what we have sort of in the pipeline and what, be, what might be necessary. There are a couple of grant programs we have, for example, uh, the Access to Home, which is a rehab program for those that are differently abled and a restore program for seniors that have emergency issues. Those are grants we would do receive from the state, so they are capped. Um, and when we run out of those, we then try to use some of the other programs that we have available. Um, and Let's see, when the listing agent is requesting a credit score, how is that handled with a voucher since it makes it irrelevant? Um, it's a really good question. We strongly encourage 
you know, we recognize that many landlords are looking at credit scores for anyone that might be renting any of their properties. I don't want to say we discourage landlords from looking at, at, at rental scores with housing choice voucher participants, but we suggest you look at it in a little bit through a different lens than you would with um, an individual that is responsible for 100% of the rental payment. Because 70% of the rental payment is paid through the program, the credit score assessment has less validity to a certain extent. Um, so it's certainly something, you know, we can't tell landlords not to look at it. They have, they have the right to look at that. Um, but we don't believe it is as strong as a factor as for someone who may be paying 100% of their rent. Um, we can also share ongoing tenancy that the individual had to show their ability to maintain that permanent housing or use other mechanisms instead of credit um, as a way to uh, determine you know, eligibility. Um, if a tenant renews a lease now and wants to pur purchase a home, is there a, t uh, a penalty to tenant breaking the lease? So the way that the program works um, for individuals who are coming into the Housing Choice Voucher Program, when they find a property that they want to reside in, they are required to live in that property for a year. Obviously, if something comes up related to health and safety concerns of that property, how the property is being managed, or some other life extenuating circumstance that your requirement can be waived. Usually though, because as I was explaining with the earlier slides, the idea is to create greater permanency and less turnover, an individual is required to stay for a year. If a after a year, a tenant and a landlord, you have the same rights as you do with any other tenant, can decide to part ways, right? A, a tenant could give their notice, same type of notice is required as with any other tenant. And the landlord, if the landlord, let's just say, wanted to move into the property themselves, would have to give the applicable time to the tenant as well. Um, so I don't know, Jenny, if that answers your question. If a home has no rental permit and the landlord doesn't want to get one, can, can they decline applicant for that reason? No. Um, I, I would say then that individual isn't, if they don't have a rental permit, they don't have a legal rental unit. Um, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading the questions in real time. If the individual was there in a property for over 10 years, they have the ability to give their 30 day notice to a landlord if, if they're looking to move out or to become a home buyer. I think, I think that covers all the questions that were in the chat. Uh, is the program offered to communities in Queens? I'm sorry, we do have um, a handful of programs that we do offer in Queens. Anyone, by the way, so our Home Ownership Center, our financial fitness and coaching programs, those have no income requirements. Um, they have no jurisdictional boundaries. So if you are you know, living in Syracuse and you're interested in going through our financial coaching, you certainly can, obviously, or our home ownership training. Obviously, when we bring in experts and in the field, whether it's mortgage lenders, realtors like yourselves, or attorneys, they are individuals that are usually knowledgeable in the Nassau and Suffolk County space. Um, but for some of our other programs in our uh, home repair um, and home improvement and optimization and some of our lending products, those are available to individuals in Queens. We actually just had two more coming on the Q and A. Um, one's asking, you know, how, how can the buyer contact you? Do you have any information that you want to drop in the chat that we can uh, share with people for contact information besides your email or? No, I mean, I think so. Um, how can the buyer contact me? Oh, you mean a, a home buyer? Is that the question? I want to make sure I'm asking. I'm I believe asking that's like, what they said. How can the buyer contact you? Can we as an agent contact you so we can educate the buyers? Sure, you can contact me. I'm also happy to... Um, share, I'm going to share our home ownership. Uh, wait, that's the wrong email. I'm sharing Trish Leeton from our team is our VP of home ownership. Um, and so feel free to reach out to her. 
If you have a homeowner that is interested in getting their homeownership certificate, is interested in learning more about some of the lending products or participating in our program. Um, and yeah, so definitely Trisha's the guru of, of homeownership. How does CDCLI help when a tenant doesn't pay their portion of the rent? Okay, great question. Um, we There are a variety of resources. So first I should just say, it's important to note that we're administering a program. We're not playing any greater role on behalf of the tenant or on behalf of the landlord, right? So any type of normal interactions or non-HCV interactions between a tenant and a landlord should continue in this scenario, right? If the landlord's not getting paid, the landlord should be communicating with the tenant, you haven't paid maybe your portion of the rent. If the landlord's not getting paid, we are an extra, this is where there's an additional value add, right? A landlord can reach out to us and say, you know, we're having an issue with Gwen O'Shea. She hasn't paid her rent in three months. I'm really concerned because she's coming up for, for uh, lease renewal. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to re renew the, the lease if she's behind on her rent, right? Then my team can reach out. We have, as I mentioned, under our resident services, what's called family self-sufficiency, where we work with individuals in the program who are looking at new financial opportunities and growth for themselves and their families. And our case uh, team there can work at looking at, okay, is it a budget issue? Is it a one-time issue? Are there some supports we could provide for that individual? Should they be on a repayment plan? So that is another additional benefit that is offered through this program that we can connect with the tenant. Ideally, you know, we want to maintain healthful, successful tenancy for landlords and for tenants. And so if there's a way that we can be supportive, we certainly um, are able and willing to do so. Uh, caseworker security deposit. Okay, so that's a really good question. I see there's a question about my understanding from the caseworker is that the security deposit and real estate commission will be paid by DSS. Please clarify. Okay, so the Department of Social Services does also does also offer um, what are referred to as one shot deals, which can be used for individuals who are uh, transitioning in housing in a variety of ways, either a security deposit, moving costs. Um, I don't want to speak for the Department of Social Services, though, about if they lean on us to pay first or they pay second. Um, I know we try to move on our payments as quickly as possible. When there needs to be a leveraging of funds, we obviously want to coordinate. Um, but again, I would... Uh, Michael, you could reach out. I don't know if the caseworker you're referring to is us or if it's someone from the Department of Social Services. And then the last thing I want to say before confusing you all even more with a lot of terminology and language is that while we administer the Housing Choice Voucher Program on behalf of New York State Office of Housing and Community Renewal, on behalf of HUD for Nassau and Suffolk counties, there also are a number of other municipalities that are public housing authorities and administer their own program. So you have areas like the town of Southampton, the town of Islip, the town of Brookhaven, the city of Glen Cove, the city of Freeport, the village of Rockville Center, the town of North Hempstead. And so I am speaking on behalf of participants that work with us individuals, many individuals may be working with other municipalities and their programs and their setups and their payment standards are slightly different. So just want to be clear in case you're talking about a caseworker that was with DSS and a potential participant, <coughs> they may or may not be working with CDLI. So I just want to make that clear for you all. Thanks. Sorry about my coughing bit there. Um, so unless you all have any other questions, you know, you know how to reach me. Um, again, I may direct you to someone on our team to provide you with more real time updated information, but, um, we're here. We're looking forward to working with each and every one of you in any way, shape or form, um, that is possible. All right. I think, uh, we just about covered it here. Um, thank you so much for answering all those questions, Gwen. Uh, I think everyone really appreciated this. This is a great overview. Um, and just to remind everyone, uh, you can find these recordings on lirealtor.com slash webinars.